hey what's up when the next part, part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings so that we might be able to be on one in one accord uh right yet yes in my previous part i was busy just as a little bit of a um, recap telling you guys how it is that my ex-boyfriend basically lured me back to coming back to him after i broke up with him because i was upset about something that i ought to have indeed been upset about and uh i expected him to basically cuss me out or diss me on some so no instead he was like i'm assuming too i love you i'll come see you tomorrow and indeed he came to my apartment the next day and when i was busy cuddling up like a fetus in his arms i was all relieved feeling like i've been given a blanket after being out in the storm <coughs> while he was thinking in his mind <coughs> Sorry, I'm choking on my spit. While he was thinking, in his mind, it worked. Literally, it worked. You know, uh, I, I I compared that activity to the scene in the movie Temptation with Judith when she goes back to Harley after being convicted that she should not be continuing to cheat on her husband with a strange man. And she is standing at his gate while he he's about to drive out with his Porsche and his door, his sliding door, his gate, whatever, opens. And Judith is standing there looking all raggedy, all gangster with old clothes looking like, you know, um like an old school woman and when uh, uh harley notices that she's just standing there and he can't drive out because she's like standing go drive in your high judith then starts to cry on some i'm sorry like apologizing to a man that was rude to her the night before uh apologizing to a man that she should not be with that she should exercise self-control and restraint concerning but she's like i'm sorry i'm sorry i love you and whatnot and all that jazz and then he sits there all arrogant on some why did you do that to me but anyway whatever i love you you're judith so come and then they go in his can't do whatever while that jasmine solomon song is playing in the background proper that's exactly how i felt when i went back to my ex Pinaele, like it could ring like if i could forget him who i would please believe me and uh, like throw the towel in da -da 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 -da. Nee -nee -nee -nee. he treats me you treat me so much better than him na -na 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 -na. there would be no competition but i'm in love with another man yeah that song proper was exactly what ought to have been playing in the background when i went back to my ex because i was being called by christ i ought have done a different thing i was supposed to love something else I was supposed to wait and just hunker down and allow myself to heal, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And a better man was calling me home. Jesus. A better man was saying, I will heal you. And all I could think coming back from that random ominous part A was, If I could forget him, I would please believe me. That's what these men are like. By practicing witchcraft on women. With their corobelas, they bring back lost lover. They are, you better stay with me or else. They you can dub me as much as you want but like a boomerang you will come back they make women sit around in sorrow on some if I could forget him oh, oh, oh I would please believe me now my, uh, my friend, my best friend tried to leave such a random buffoon and indeed latch on to Jesus this was after I got saved and I tried to encourage her to basically be strong like I was made strong um and she couldn't the bible says the lord will give mercy to whomever he will give mercy in all fairness she was esau in that regard I i'm sorry to have to say this but you know the bible in romans 9 says jacob i have loved yet esau i have hated i will give mercy to whomever i will give mercy how can the pottery say to the potter what have you done the way that god um interceded for me the way that he interjected the way he rescued me from my ex he could have done the same thing for my friend but he didn't i was just like my friend trapped in a situation that i struggled to get out of at the same time of being convicted by the holy spirit that different things had to happen but god m like maneuvered things in such a way with my boyfriend that he made my ex mess up in a prolific capacity and it was not even garabo that finally succeeded to leave the ex it was the ex that treated her like trash so much during one breakup and acted a violent fool that even though 
If I could forget him, ooh, ooh, I would. Please believe in me. Yeah, no, I couldn't because he was the one with the decision made. I'm going to actually read Romans 9 to help you understand the difference between my best friend and I. What happened? So that you guys can maybe be encouraged to not take the grace of God for granted when he calls you to resist temptation. Sometimes God goes above and beyond to slap something out of the lap of someone that he wants to use. But sometimes the Lord will rather expect you to just use your discernment for crying out loud. And if you don't, you're lost. What is the difference between the two? Absolutely nothing. The one is not better. The one is not more loved. Uh, the Not so much more loved, but the one is not more deserving of the grace of God and the intervention of God and so a supernatural capacity. Um, it's just that God decided to do it that way. Decided to do it that way. This ought to encourage people to just heed the message of admonition and not expect God to keep on sending lightning strikes from heaven because sometimes you won't get them because you very potentially might not be Jacob and it is what it is. God is sovereign. Y'all human race just gotta take that in your stride. It is written in uh, Romans 9. I am speaking truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears witness um uh, bears me witness in the holy spirit that i have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart for i could not wish that i myself were accursed and cut off from christ for the sake of my brothers my king's men according to the flesh they are israelites and to them belong the adoption the glory the covenants the giving of the law the worship and the promises to them belong the patriarchs and from their race according to the flesh is the christ who is god over all blessed forever amen why again under heaven that you should not be arguing with why the lord chose the hebrews and so therefore come up with your own little doctrine hebrew israelites and say that they were black they weren't they're in the middle east they've got olive skin and he chose them deal but it is not as though the word of god has failed for all for not all who are descended from israel belong to israel and not all are children of abraham because they are his offspring but through isaac shall your offspring be named this means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of god but the children of the promise are counted as offspring for this is what the promise said about this time next year i will return and sarah shall have a son and rebecca not only and sarah shall have a son where am i where am i reading and not only so but also when rebecca had conceived children by one man our forefather isaac though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad this is from where you should listen in order that god's purpose of election might continue not because of works but because of him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written jacob i loved but esau i hated what shall we say then is there injustice on god's part by no means for he says to moses i will have mercy on whom i have mercy and i will have compassion on whom i have compassion so then it depends not on human will or exertion but on god who has mercy for the scripture says to pharaoh for this very purpose i have raised you up that i might show my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth so then he has mercy on whomever he wills and he hardens whomever he wills you will say to me then why does he still find fault for who can resist his will but who are you O man to answer back to god will what is molded say to its molder why have you made me like this has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use what if god desiring to show his wrath and to make his power known his power has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy which he has prepared beforehand for glory even us whom he has called not from the jews only but also from the gentiles as indeed he says in hosea those who were not my people i will call my people and her who was not beloved i will call beloved and in the very place where it was said to them you are not my people there they will be called sons of the living god and isaiah cries out concerning israel though the number of the sons of israel be as the sand of the sea only a remnant of them will be saved for the lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay and isaiah predicted 
And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. Yeah, my best friend and I went through the exact same thing, but the Lord had mercy on me. I had nothing to do with conquering my ex. I was rebellious just like my best friend. Just like my best friend, I also thought that I needed to leave my boyfriend for another guy. I dilly-dallied and flirted with a guy literally just like my best friend in the office. And it didn't work out just like with my best friend. And after my best friend flirted with a guy in the office, she was lured back at this was I was at two a bad man she wanted to leave desperately and this bad man impregnated her while my ex was made to mess up so badly that he never even got an opportunity to impregnate the lord had mercy on whomever he will have mercy jacob i have loved yet esau i have hated vessels of honor vessels of dishonorable use vessels of dishonorable use used that they might be used to bring glory to vessels of mercy it is so important to test yourself to see if you're in the faith to not take god's grace for granted some people get prevented from from kicking themselves in the foot from striking their foot on a stone some people god bears them up through his angels and literally unbeknownst to themselves they did nothing good right they nothing of them had earned it but god just moves them out the way very providentially he dumps down minds around them he calluses human beings he causes people to like shoot themselves in the foot i have been thrown out of relationships kicking and screaming is it three guys three relationships it was my ex and then the next dude that i did initially when I was brand spanking you in Christ and then the last one them the one that became my fiance from the US all men all of them without fail go fail God made them manifest such horrible demons that they treated me like trash and it was only one man that I exercised self-control and restraint to not go back to but the other two the other two I wanted to go back the one that I exercised restraint over was because he was just a, such a child and not bore and he was rude and he worked in my building and I was like I'm not gonna let some little boy working in my building wreak havoc in my life how and uh, like i said i was strong i was resolved i was new in christ and so i was fervent and feisty and i had a lot of faith at the time i'd yet to be tested by persecution so this guy was just like i'm gorgeous in jesus however the other two my ex i was yet to be saved and the dude from the u.s i was suffering in so much sorrow i had so much pain in my heart that i did not want to be alone to a point where i wanted to settle for wait for it a guy that was twice divorced ex-convict that frankly could not even be like kind to me i I was like i'm tired of being alone i was like i can i can save him i said to myself that since i i had observed myself panel beating a man into shape like i did with my ex i can fix this one he wants to take care of me he wants to protect me and provide for me i'll take him i'll take him and god was like no my goodness gracious he's not just an ex-con with some kid he's not even taking care of and another one that he abandoned because he went to prison he's twice divorced and he is a satanist by all means god if you want to shoot yourself in the foot go on but i'm not gonna let you not on my watch like going back to a devil worshiper and some god blocks it whereas others he lets them shoot themselves in the foot god could have let me shoot myself in the foot with my ex and well, both of these exes but he was like never why for his glory i'm doing this work i had to tell the story i had to snatch people out from the flames i had to block people from making the same mistakes i made i had to help them identify the hallmarks of a man or a woman that is dabbling in the occult and is try literally using witchcraft in a relationship to keep a person in i had to come and tell the story there was no way there was going to be any glory to send over to god if i found myself married to a devil worshiper anyway my girl did though and that turned her it converted her herself into one so very unfortunate repent therefore that you might not perish guys do not take the grace of god for granted because it is not everybody that god goes before for that way it is not everybody that god will literally shift mountains to slap random fools that are dilly dallying about in the footsteps of this human being out of the way out of the way it is not everyone that is going to be given the glory and the benefit of that rebellion it is not everybody that is going to get the ish man the kind of father experience that literally shoots a gangster boyfriend sorry my phone this thing that i'm using to keep my phone aloft it just fell apart on me and i mistakenly stopped recording so yeah i was saying that it is not everybody that gets their father shooting dead the boyfriend 
or the gangster lover boy that wants to steal the princess daughter sometimes the dad is like yeah go and destroy your life and basically learn from your lessons you will be a monolith you will be an example to everybody you will be like Sodom and you will be like Gomorrah you will be a pillar of salt lost wife afterwards um, I've warned you I've given you the Bible you don't want to listen yeah some people God will have nothing to do with them deciding to not listen anyway and if you are in that uh what do you call this thing? If you are in that conglomerate, if you are Jacob, you will be very frustrated because you will want to make mistakes that you frankly are like, let me make my own mistakes, let me make my own choices, but a sovereign God will order things in such a way so as to make sure that you never do. Ultimately, you wake up, you sober up to realize what he was doing, and in so waking up, then basically thank him for helping you dodge a bullet, but understand people, some human beings, the Lord allows them to stay in the path of a bullet because you chose to walk into it that is why it is important therefore to just heed the message of the gospel or protect yourself be responsible do not put yourself in a position to one day go back and be like to god but why did you let me marry a dark thing i gave you everything you needed in order to live a life in godliness i put in your path warnings you ignored them the lord will not do this for everyone he did it for me and i'm grateful but like i said it has nothing to do with what i did he just made it such that things providentially were ordered in that way and and I was like, like I said, I was grateful, but I watched the same phenomenon slap my friend upside the head with no intervention. All she had was the gospel. All she had was me. You know that thing, that, that, that parable in the scripture, it's not a parable, I believe it's actually a true story, the rich man and Lazarus, how the rich man says to Abraham, please send Lazarus up to the, to the earth in order that he might tell my brothers to repent. Because then if they see a man rising from the dead, they will believe. And then Abraham responds and says, they have got Abraham and the prophet, uh, not Abraham, it is Abraham. Him. they have got Moses and the prophets basically they have a Bible and besides between you and us there is a great gulf meaning that Lazarus cannot come over to you just accept deal your brothers must read the Bible they must read the Torah then they will get saved if they want to get saved yeah a lot of times God responds to people that way he tells them you've got Moses and the prophets how do you avoid entering into a bad marriage you've got the Bible you keep getting told don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers you keep getting told uh, you will reap corruption if you sow to the flesh you reap what you sow etc all these things if you don't want to heed and you find yourself in a hellish situation, the Lord will tell you, you had Moses and you had the prophets. But he will have mercy on whomever he will have mercy and he will harden whomever he will harden. Do not put yourself in a position to be hardened by God. Because what hardens a soul, what hardens a heart is disregarding of scripture. It is littered across the word of God. Because they have not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in their unrighteousness, God hands them over to their debased minds. My friend was given the truth. My friend was given the gospel. My friend, we had a whole lofty conversation about sexual immorality. We read from is it 1 Corinthians Moho 6 where flee from sexual immorality for no one who partakes in these things will enter or inherit the kingdom of heaven and we had such strong conviction about sex before marriage and all that jazz and she went right back and fornicated so she had Moses she had the prophets and then she found herself being the baby mama of a zombie man but as for Garabo same person convicted of sexual sin fell back into fornication and it cast my ex into an abysmal state of insanity until I basically got over him same conviction, same leading, same unsurrendered state. However, different reaction by God. Why? Literally, I can't tell you. I don't know why God did it for me, but not for her. Jacob, I have loved Esau. I have hated. It's just God. And if you're going to have qualms with him as the potter, Re, what in the world? He's your potter. He gets to, out of one, the same lump of clay, create one for honorable use and another for dishonor. It is the Lord who chooses, not because of anything you've done. So do better, guys. Just take Moses and the prophets and run with it do not wait for god to lightning strike shoot dead from the sky the random buffoon that's trying to marry you despite being a satanic high priest i just watched uh who is this what's her name she calls herself prophetess whatever and i find her issues with people who give themselves these titles and these labels but whatever she married prophet lovi it's like you're a girl how are you gonna go out like that you have moses and you have the prophets what did moses tell you sister girl you cannot for the life of you marry a man that's been married before whose former spouse is still walking these streets because that's adultery she has moses she has the prophets god could have struck prophet lovi out of the way dead on the marriage day to be like no my daughter please do better mm -mm. don't marry a man that first and foremost has evidence that you will know them by their fruit and he's not bearing fruit he's a false prophet he loves money and on top of that why is he marrying you entering into adultery god gave this woman the bible and she still married a man that's married she's an adulteress now and she will likely miss the rapture 
The Lord might give her grace and still rescue her, but she was not delivered in the same way that I was. Why? Because God will have mercy on whomever he will have mercy. The same thing also goes for Marcus Rogers' wife. She had Moses and the prophets and decided to marry a man with two ex-wives. Carabo meets a man with two ex-wives and the Lord is like, I cost. Why? I don't know. I have Moses. I have the prophets. I had the scriptures. I wanted to marry him. I, I accepted his proposal, but God was like, oh, no. God, but yeah, that's it. Like, no, just like that. So, uh, me and prophets for Lovie's wife or mistress let's call her a mistress because that's exactly what she is right now what's the difference absolutely nothing there is no difference in the flesh only difference is that whether or not i have moses and the prophets god made a decision that he's gonna kick to the curb my version of prophet Lovie, my version of marcus rogers before he comes in and takes a woman that's never been married a woman that's never had children she's basically a virgin a woman that belongs to another husband she's bespoke to somebody else and just allows her to marry a charlatan that she knows is a charlatan but she is in a rush to walk down the aisle Carabo somehow gets moved out of the way but this dude doesn't. This chiquita doesn't. Why? Like I said, I don't know. Other than he will have mercy on whomever he will have mercy. You have Moses, ladies. You have the prophets. You have the Torah. You have Garab. And if you still marry a dude that is slicing you up like no man's business, cooking it up a storm, ka, your inner, your insides in the occult, keeping you in a relationship you don't want to be in, and you go to God, you pray, you ask him to exor to exercise, to exorcise you out of that state, strange state. He then tells you, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Tells you, walk away from sexual immorality and fornication tells you pray without ceasing tells you consecrate yourself to me until i make your enemies a footstool under your feet like your enemies to basically grovel at your feet i will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies gives you all these promises and then you still are like you know what i'm gonna test the lord my god and then you go on right ahead to allow yourself to be flirted with by some random dude that knows jesus not this friend of mine only busy flirting in the office limb zcc zcc combination of ancestral worship and christianity i was not flirting with um zcc per se because he hated christianity but that's the thing he hated christianity and i'm gonna tell you the story of my particular guy that i wanted to leave my boyfriend for nesim zed maraona toile jess he hated christianity and he made it known and clear to me but i still wanted it. same story different outcome why the lord had mercy on whomever he will have mercy yeah i'm sorry for my friend he hardened whomever he will harden i could have been hardened but god chose not to i cannot tell you why that's why you don't mess with god you will reap what you sow the lord will show favor to whomever he will he is not a respecter of persons but he's doing a job here with imperfect vessels vessels on the earth and some of them he just decidedly makes a decision to you know just scoot random darkness out of their path for reasons that we cannot fathom he has the wisdom and we don't get to say to him what have you done nebuchadnezzar makes it clear as well when he wakes up groveling from eating grass for seven years he's like the nations of this earth are counted as nothing before emmanuel no one can look at him and be like what have you done so just honor the precepts and protect yourself from essentially ending up a vessel of dishonor in second and first is a second timothy Ish cat ne ki porke gaat man hai in in first or second timothy so that you can understand what a responsibility you have as a human being to not play God, to not mock God. Whatsoever you reap, you will sow. You don't get to hope that you are Jacob, who is loved in spite of being a charlatan. And not never mind, not so much charlatan. What is this? A, a trickster. Jacob was such a trickster that indeed his brother ought have been favored above him, and yet God chose to favor Jacob instead of Esau. Esau was a much better man by this world's standards, and yet the Lord chose Jacob. It ought then humiliate mankind's ability belief in one's own excellence to think or when you're so much better than everybody else that the lord is going to have your back he will sometimes let you walk down the aisle to the scansons so it's a king buffoon that doesn't make sense while he supernaturally delivers somebody else second timothy uh two from verse uh two i'm sorry i just want to know let us just let us just read a second timothy to gaufela so you can understand what responsibility even though we've got the presence of god's sovereignty we have to just honor god because he said so okay otherwise you might find yourself being in an esau type establishment what was esau's general issue so that we can put that out there esau was hungry in the field playing it up a storm his brother made him jacob and uh, robbed him of his birthright and god has such a big qualm with that esau being hungry his brother was like give me your birthright and just fell off for a loaf of bread he was prepared to just sell everything this because of having done that the lord just despised him from that point going forward however if you look at the misdemeanors of joseph of jacob all throughout the scriptures the lord should have been a lot more annoyed with him instead all that J jacob got away with is a limp after he wrestled with God all night to bless him, then he walked around with a limp. Jacob, all that God did to him was make sure that he marries first the woman that he doesn't want, and then ultimately the woman that he wants. He was given the whole Leah and Rachel 
issue and then later on rachel died while he was left with women that he was not that much in love with while giving birth to his favorite son then his favorite son died while he didn't die he was le left for dead he was uh assumed dead but however he was sold into slavery in egypt and now he had to mourn a son that wasn't actually dead and only years later he would find out that his sons lied to him duped him into believing his son was dead that's how god judged him but he nonetheless gave him the promise he nonetheless gave him the promise esau made one mistake one and god was like you're done don't mess with god you don't know if you're esau or, or jacob you literally don't know do not be selling your birthright for a piece of bread another story case in point saul okay saul the one that was busy fighting david one mistake and he was out out yet david david and bathsheba that situation he could have lost the holy spirit he could have had the same fate that stabbed king saul but god chose david and so he never took the promise away from david however the sword never left his household amnon raped tamar absalom had issues with that killed amnon uh following which he then took the kingdom from david david was in flight for pretty much the duration of the kingship or the like random strange thing that absalom was doing judah and israel were separated ultimately it was restored into one piece but all that calamity that fall into um what is this david's household was because of the fact that david was a no-brainer and he reaped what he sowed in light of that particular issue however promise taken away from him never days it didn't happen saul however made one mistake groveled pleaded begged god and nothing ever was recovered to him you don't know if you're saul you don't know if you're david another case in point judas who else betrayed the son of man peter but who was chosen peter but not judas judas sold the son of man for like what three pieces or 20 however many pieces of silver and he ended up committing a suicide death right that's what's good he died and the fella lost unable to repent however peter denied jesus three times before the rooster crowed and the lord told him after wreaking havoc you're going to turn around and strengthen your brothers you are going to betray me satan has sought to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you why didn't the lord do the same thing for judas give him an opportunity to come back around after doing a strange thing because jacob he loved esau he hated peter he loved judas he hated david he loved saul he hated jacob he loved esau he hated you all need to understand guys you don't get to dilly dally dance around and pl pray, play with the grace of god and the sad and uncomfortable thing is the grace the doctrine of grace is what's causing so many wannabe christians to just keep on sinning like roaming these streets rolling around in the mud like dipping themselves in it and I don't think I've had a chocolate and then hope to make heaven there are people who like the thief on the cross repent on their deathbeds because god gives them a deathbed repentance but others telling themselves that they will give themselves over to jesus somewhere along the way in their lives then get killed massacred literally they get shot on the street telling themselves that they will repent next year and join the ministry and then they die right there and go to hell what is the difference between the guy that literally the lord allows to get to a ripe old age and only repent on his deathbed after living like an, an, an a, a balloon versus the person that has determined to serve in ministry at the age of 25 but god kills him at 24 and a half it is precisely the fact that he will have mercy on whoever he will have mercy and that as a human being you do not get to test god and get away with it as a human being you also do not get to take the grace of god for granted as a human being you must just be humble before the lord because he can choose whomever he wants to choose to give an exorbitant amount of undeserved mercy or not and when he makes a decision to do that he's in the heavens he does whatever he pleases he gets to it is his clay and as the potter he gets to mold it in whichever fashion he wants second timothy 2 basically uh, speaks about exactly that so let's get into it let's read you then my child be strengthened by the grace that is in christ jesus and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also share in suffering as a good soldier in christ jesus no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him and as athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules it is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops think over what i say for the lord will give you understanding in everything remember jesus christ risen from the dead the offspring of david as preached in my gospel for which i am suffering bound with chains as a criminal but the word of god is not bound therefore i endure everything for the sake of the elect that they may also obtain salvation that is in christ jesus with eternal glory the saying is in trustworthy the saying is trustworthy trustworthy sorry for if we have died with him we will also live with him if we endure we will also reign with him if we deny him he will also deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself guess who denied christ three times 
and yet he chose not to deny him even though 2 Timothy 2 says that um, if we deny him he will also deny us Peter but he is among the 12 apostles that inherit that glory in the new Jerusalem what under heaven is the difference between Peter and Judas absolutely nothing but for the grace of God what for these satanists that eventually repent and give their lives to Christ versus those who don't I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy what for Saul on the road to Damascus that was a Pharisee of Pharisees those really severely loathed by God because of their self-righteousness God gives him redemption however what happens to him he is given a thorn in the flesh that he might not be conceited messenger from Satan all the way up until he dies he begs God three times to take it away he never does there are ramifications for being chosen in that regard if you decide to basically take it for granted nonetheless if God has seen it fit to give you mercy above others who similarly like you were condemned he will do so but not without ramifications so if you decide to act a little fool you may not be Jacob like you like people just automatically walk in a stance of believing themselves as Esau because if at all you are Esau what you must do to be right in the sight of God is make sure you don't sell your birthright for a piece of bread that you might be in right stand is right standing with God otherwise you're in trouble you're in trouble you don't know who you is there's no way of figuring it out so you don't just get to take the Bible for granted in Jesus a worker approved by God from verse 14 remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words which does no good but only ruins the hearers do your best to present yourselves as one that God approves so those are y'all who think guguti all we need to roll around in these streets with this grace because we are saved not of words not of anything we've done understand that you display that you are born again by walking in the fruit of the holy spirit if you don't do it you're taking god for granted you are testing him and you very potentially might not be jacob so you don't even get given another shot to wake up and see that you're just messed up do your best to present yourselves to god as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth but avoid irreverent babble for it it will lead people into more and more ungodliness and their walk will spread their talk sorry will spread like gangrene among them are Hananias and Philetus who have swerved from the truth say, uh, saying saving uh, saying that the resurrection has already happened they are upsetting the faith of some but God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal the Lord knows who are his and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity this is your responsibility God knows who belongs to him and if at all you be calling out your, yourself a Christian depart from iniquity leave witchcraft behind leave fornication and sorcery behind don't take God for granted and the next thing be like why Karabo because he wants to because Karabo he has loved but friend out here in these streets he has hated be afraid be very afraid have reverence and honor for God guys do that depart from iniquity the Lord our God is not to be tested it is not of anything I've done I'm not special spectacular or even smart I am just decidedly Jacob in the sight of God for no other reason than that's just what he wanted to do now in a great house there are not only vessels again we spoke about vessels of honorable use there in Romans 9 remember here it is again the Bible is beautiful hermeneutics is like a whole thing exegesis is like interpreting scripture with scripture y'all gotta read the Bible I don't know why you be out in these streets walking around with Bibles underneath your armpits and yet you frankly are just walking around in iniquity dancing up and down on the spot like a kangaroo expecting to be embraced you're gonna be told by Jesus to depart from him work of iniquity and then you're gonna be like that God remember God and I made the same mistakes well Jacob I have loved yet Esau I have hated that God what have you done you're the pottery you don't get to ask me that now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for honorable use and some for dishonorable therefore if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable yet again those of y'all who keep on preaching grace and not of anything you've done trying to justify your sin thinking you're gonna enter into heaven be afraid be very afraid because you've not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in your unrighteousness you get headed over to a debased mind okay you gas to constantly cleanse yourself the five wise virgins got oil in their lamps oil in your lamp is a work we are not saved by works but we display that we are saved when our works are cleansed in the sight of God. For he is the one that prepares us in advance to walk in them. Thus, if you're not walking in those works, you're very frankly not chosen. Many are gold, but few are chosen. Now, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and clay. Some for honorable silver and of wood and clay, but some for honorable... Oh, again, I'm sorry. Some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable 
useful use set apart as holy useful to the master of the house ready for every good work there's no making yourself ready when you're busy fornicating doing witchcraft having so much envy against your girl that you're just gonna do a strange little thing as you're in these streets the lord may choose to give garabo more time than you because garabo was david versus saul as saul if you want to maintain yourself as one who has got favor in the sight of god very simply just listen to the prophet samuel when he tells you that don't take any plunder if you take plunder unlike joseph unlike J uh, david sorry you're not just going to be given a slap in the wrist with the issue in your household just not ceasing to be a problem and Bathsheba ending up your wife anyway you just losing a child in a miscarriage but nonetheless you inherit eternal life in a kingdom you're gonna be like saul who just gets cut off altogether you don't know who you are and so for those reasons to honor god in fear and in reverence is to be responsible so flee that's my friend who we literally read such scriptures together in my car one time and she chose not to do it i also read such scriptures from reading up on soul ties over and over again prior to actually really surrendering to god such scriptures and i still fornicated afterwards nonetheless he gave me mercy but not my friend so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord from a pure heart have nothing to do with foolish ignorant controversies you know that they breed quarrels and the lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but be kind to everyone able to teach patiently enduring evil correcting his opponents with gentleness god may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of truth which is what i'm trying to do to all of my enemies telling you all of these stories that you might have all of this context that you might understand how things neatly tie into the eventualities that slap us upside the head later on and they may come to their senses okay and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will god chose to use me so my prayer is that you will be indeed savable by one who you initially wanted to hear nothing coming from the mouth of don't make like judas don't make like Esau. Do not make like Saul. Do not make like Vashti. Do not make like Panina. Like proper guys. You know what the Lord. <laughs> he decides who he will give mercy versus who he won't. Panina was abominable in the sight of God. Yet Leah wasn't. Leah gave the same grief that Panina gave Hannah. Yet the Lord looked upon Leah with favor. He rescued her. He saved her. He had mercy on the fact that she was the unloved wife. But God never had mercy on Panina for being the unloved wife. He will give mercy on whomever he will give mercy so we don't look at leah as an evil woman yet despite the same issues she gave rachel that panina did we look at panina as evil what's the difference god the difference is entirely and comprehensively god so here it is then that garab was dating this boyfriend of hers having conviction by the holy spirit that sex before marriage is wrong i got back together with him went back to him i'm in love with another man basically walking away from god who was calling me yet god rescued me from harley in temptation but he did not rescue my girls here is my boyfriend right i had so many it was just not it was not just my, my 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 best friend that did this but other of my friends that made the same mistakes but they fell into an abysmal state with bad men when when I, while i was rescued i guess for the very purposes of delivering this work today i guess i had to be not so bitter to be able to successfully deliver this work I just, like yeah god is the one that chooses okay uh anywho anyhow my boyfriend we get back together i am ensconced in the fake peace blanket of a man that's gone bad albeit having started out a really great guy can't fix him think i can because i think i'm rambo staring fandam yeah nonetheless i think you know i can do this mm -hmm. singing myself a little rah rah song pom-poms all over the show flailing over my folly and god watches this and is still pursuing me same way that he pursued my friend but i came to him ultimately after he caused my ex my ex to be abandoned the same man that like um struggles to stay gone from me now got worse and worse here it is that i am with my boyfriend back together all right in this like random strange stead and then uh one day he comes over to my apartment again i told you guys that we used to hook up on the weekends uh, he tells me i'll be there at around 6 p.m first babe i got to have a meeting about business he said to me that it's business related he was like i've got a business meeting and he was busy starting a business and I, it was believable i mean like i said new car everything like what he was obviously doing something good well something was working he was however still working for his company right before he quit of permanent finally and officially to run a business he tells me he's got a business meeting i'm like okay no it's cool i'll see you later i'll hang out in the run-up too in the apartment waiting for you i can't wait to see you love you bye okay 
indeed he came on time remember with last time we broke up because he decided to knock like no man's business at 2 a.m in the morning until 3 yeah that we break we broke up over so no such stunt happened literally again you know he sort of kind of did a better thing and he came nicely at 6 p.m like he said he would and i'm like hey baby how are you and i'm all happy to see him and we have you know a good time and watch tv and whatnot and hang out and yeah all the things that couples do and i'm, I'm like we're chilling we're chilling uh because i was at the stage very used to my ex-boyfriend no longer where we like just random bunny rabbits like doing rampant things as soon as we see each other uh, ripping each other like jewish like a boyfriend all like frantic no we were not there so we just we like we were like decent human beings that waited until busi <laughs> until like 11 12 at night when we were finally going to bed to do whatever so i never picked anything up and up until then on him i never picked up any random scent no strange anything until busi until night time all day long we were just hanging out kicking it watching tv eating pizza talking up a storm hearing stories just the boyfriend that i'd always had and i was feeling kind of blessed that yeah this is like my man this is good i'm happy we go to bed and we start to get all intimate and what have you and guys i'm sorry to have to sort of share this stuff i'm not even gonna share details but i'm just gonna make it clear that i could smell another woman on his manhood yeah i don't know if you guys have seen the movie baby boy there's a time when taraji accuses tyrese of cheating and he denies it he denies it and then taraji is like fine let me sniff you and she goes down there on him and sniffs him up a storm and then concludes that he has not cheated well i had a taraji experience but the outcome was the opposite while we were busy doing whatever we were doing I smelt him down there and he literally smelled like another woman. Y'all, that smell, everybody knows what that smell is. Like, don't nobody move. Men who cheat on their wives take a shower because of that smell. Men who cheat on their girlfriends take a shower because of that smell. And I could not understand why under heaven my boyfriend cheated on me literally on the exact same day and came to my apartment at least your boy's apartment boy and shower. He had told me he was going to go and meet with his friend. It was a business meeting. And at the time I concluded that he and his boy were busy cheating on both of us. But it just did not add up because usually if you're going to be cheating on your girl um with some like random strange girl on the side of the street you will take her out give her drinks spend the night with her and then you will only see your girl the next day hardly ever unless you're like a total flagrant cheat with my which my ex wasn't will you find a guy sleeping with a prostitute during the day and then diving into his wife at night usually men kind of plan to cheat and they also kind of plan to shower before they go back home so for me i couldn't understand what it's like 6 p.m you came to my apartment at 6 so when did you do this at 3 p.m in the afternoon this woman that you cheated on me with my oh my was she so much of a harlot that she was content for you to i don't know ram into her in a car or in in some strange bedroom in your boy's apartment how did in the world did this happen yes after sniffing him i was like dude you smell like a woman you smell like a woman down there and you smell like a woman so much that whoever that woman was ain't even clean because even after you and i get all heavy and hectic you don't smell like that whatever that is it's somebody that's either unhygienic or sick i don't know but it smelled yeah it was off all right and i could it was it, oh guys lord have mercy on me i was like dude like you you reek obviously using language and uh, that is very worldly you smell like yeah etc like down there <laughs> and my boyfriend i told you he struggled to lie to me even when he was busy becoming a little devil worshiper so he did not deny it neither did he admit it but the way that he was like Mm, no i didn't yeah told me that he messed up he wasn't like what i mean guys if you'd never if you if you didn't do that and somebody accused you of doing it you'd be like what the heck hey you and your paranoia i'm sick and tired you would probably react like that on some what i'm sorry no i'm leaving i'm going home sometimes a person will go indeed and react that way in order to you know divert attention from the fact that they have actually cheated but if at all you're truly innocent and somebody accuses you of such a thing as that the way that you respond to their um interrogation of you in that regard would not be to be like no i didn't that's not how you respond to somebody accusing you of coming to see them after sleeping with another girl you're like no i didn't that's how he responded he was like no i didn't i was like Panda, no mudlona, I was no kuno, no kama man. this person can't even lie what the heck am i supposed to do i was like what in the world is going on yes he denied it and denied it and i wanted to carry on like doing whatever it is that we were doing but i just couldn't the smell was just so poignant it was just and it was literally concentrated in that region he didn't smell like perfume on the neck 
or even like somebody had been licking his biceps triceps whatever no it was down there concentrated down there it's like whoever was busy with him did not even bother to come to his lips i i like i did not smell a woman all over him it was just there what kind of a woman concentrate on just that area and fella wreaking havoc in a man's life that belongs to you? That is a woman that is either a prostitute and like literally we don't kiss, all we do is that. Or ritual sex. I only came to the conclusion of ritual sex when I was saved. I never would have made that conclusion. It just would not have been something I defaulted into thinking when I was still lost because that's not the kind of stuff I was reading up on anyway. So now I just thought very naturally, oh you're cheating, you're cheating. Yeah, but it was not cheating. My ex went, I believe that day to a meeting with his boy the same guy that was inducting him to the occult teaching him to treat me like trash ignore me when i cry until i grovel and go back to him the same guy that indeed helped him along with his business the same guy that around the same time that he was hanging out with this dude that's when he got the car that's when the, he got the, the wardrobe makeover he had a meeting with him which he called a business meeting earlier that day and it turns out that oh i guess business meetings are there still business meetings if it helps you get your business running if it helps you get your life in a bunch even if it's satanic even if it's in some funny little temple and you gotta do a ritual at the end of the day if it's going to make your business grow if it's going to bring you the tender if it is going to give you the business deal it's still a business meeting but it involves sex and candles that are lit and random chantings and gruntings and some woman whose sole job is to just do something on you and move on one of my cousins got very heavily involved in satanic worship and god showed me that how she sealed the deal to get a strange promotion that did not make sense for her credentials was through ritual sex she had to sleep with her boss who was the guy that she met who inducted her into the occult and in order to seal the deal they had to literally shamefully publicly in front of a bunch of grunting satanists have sex and this ritual sex from what the lord showed me there are no human protocols that cater to the dangers within the medical industry of unprotected sex employed ain't no time for condoms in the occult when they when people are having ritual orgies or ritual sex they do not use protection because apparently it's part of the deal for them to go raw that's why so many people who join the occult find themselves severely regretting what in the world they did because they come out on the other side hiv positive they get the job they get the promotion they get the career but they also get the aids here it is that i was dealing with a man that had what i believe done a ritual to seal a business deal on the day that he was going to hook up with his girl later on and he came to me after that and it did not dawn on him to shower first and i don't know what kind of man would cheat on his girl and not wash that stench off that she might not suspect anything other than a man that was told the only way that you're going to prosper to successfully transfer whatever it is that we have done on you even on this media of yours is if you go and you take this woman into your woman well it's so he had to successfully have sex with me in that state literally go into some woman and then come into me having never washed off whatever was on him it was part of the deal like i said god will have mercy on whomever he will have mercy so what did the lord do he made sure that i smelt it he made sure that i picked up the stench and when i picked it up i tried to carry on because he denied it and denied it he denied it and denied it but for me every time i would go back to you know kissing him and what i was like i'm sorry i know the smell i'm sorry guy Nizamil. so basically we ended up sleeping i was like i'm not doing this and i told him that i can't prove it i don't know what you've done i can't prove it but i'm like i know that smell from a mile away and there's no way that i'm having sex with you this whole weekend you might as well go home i didn't kick him out because i had no proof but we slept i just slept salala did not do anything i couldn't even cry because i didn't know that i had to cry i didn't know if i was cheated on because he denied it I had no proof i also couldn't fathom why he would do this because it was so out of character it was so out of character he was not the kind to cheat and fella ram into a woman in the office and come home to be with his girlfriend i couldn't i couldn't just accuse him of this so because i was uncertain i didn't want whatever was on him in me and i was like and i let get hiv just gawking at me i can't not when i have this kind of proof next thing if i go test for hiv and i come out positive the day i suspected and yet i still continued having sex no so we slept and but before we slept i was like going forward you and i are using condoms i never would have even gotten to that point where i said we're using condoms if i could prove he cheated but i had no proof however what stench came off him was so extreme that whether or not i was being paranoid was irrelevant but i was going to enforce condoms lo and behold he did not complain the whole relationship that i was in with my ex literally from the beginning the very even first time we had sex uh we didn't we, we were not in possession of condoms and we were in heat 
and all we did all i asked him was have you taken an hiv test long ago like recently he was like yeah about this week time i was like okay i'm also negative and i risked it i risked it so literally our relationship had never known a condom like even from the very beginning i risked it and it well didn't hurt me because he was negative and so was i and here it is that four years into the relationship all of a sudden a couple that had not ever seen not even once used condoms before they're starting four years into a relationship and you use a condom there are women who women who marry uh, one woman in particular grandpa was even listening to a story some time ago who said that yeah now she told her husband that they're going to continue to use condoms even after they get married and i'm like why are you marrying him then why are you marrying him then sisters because you don't trust that he's not going to cheat on you how in the world are you entering into a marriage with a man you can't trust so badly that you have got to use condoms and every time you want to try for a baby you gotta go take an hiv test you're basically saying go out there and have sex as much as you want cheat on me but you know i'm gonna keep checking if you're sick yes the level of settling in women is ridiculous and here it is that I was telling my boyfriend that I now no longer trust her sexually that from now on we're gonna use condoms and what did he say he was like okay but this guy he didn't fight me he didn't re rebel it's almost as though he knew what he did was just freaking ominous and he was like I guess you get to protect yourself from whatever under heaven I'm doing just in so far as you don't leave me well God rescued me from that I'm gonna now tell you what in the world happened going forward next part